I find it very compelling to see wood which has been discarded, which has had a life and somehow that life is seen as ended or that usefulness is gone and it's been chucked in the skip or, you know, it's been chucked at the side of the road as um, fly tipping or it's been neglected and forgotten about. I, I then feel compelled to somehow give it a new life or do something with it uh, in the way that I wouldn't if it was a lovely piece of rosewood or walnut or Cuban mahogany or something which had this inherent quality to the, the material. But the interest for me is much more in the history that has been imposed in the wood as well. So you have a combination of the weathering in the wood, the evidence of human traffic on it, of handling, of old locks where screws have been, and with paint, with that weathering of paint, and the combination between all these things and the, and the active influence of light on it, which can fade the, the colors and bring out other things. And all this comes together to create, to create a surface, which is, is, is really the start of what inspires me. If I was a painter, I could entirely dictate on the canvas what I wanted. Whereas if I'm working with salvage material, I'm dictated to by the restrictions of the dimensions of the piece. I might like something, but it might be very short, or it might be the wrong size, or it, it might have something about it which is not usable. So it's a quick, quick case of do I edit that out or do I just go with that? So there's a constant exchange between what's in front of you and what you feel is going to work, what you want to impose. And it's that tension between what you want to impose on something and what it, it's, it's screaming at you not to do or to do. It's, it's that exchange which is, I think, part of the sort of hub of the creative process. I wasn't formally trained in colour, so I tend to use colour in a much more intuitive way. When I start with lighter palettes, I suppose I'm, I'm thinking of um, tones much more than colour. I, I don't use colour in the same way that a painter would where they think in terms of colour pushing things forward or back. I want there to be an ambiguity about whether something is coming forward or back because, um, because I'm, I'm using things which were three-dimensional, I have a sense in which something is overlapping something else or something's behind something, but I don't want that to be absolutely rigid. What works for me is laying th the objects on the ground looking at them and playing with them. And that is essentially my sketching. And the great thing is you have a, a great sense of freedom because you're not making any mistakes. You're not committing to something. Um, even if you're you know, applying something to paper, you're sort of committing to that line. Whereas if you're just placing things on the floor, you can constantly change them and you know, try that, try this, this doesn't work. Almost too many possibilities at times because you have an infinity of things you can do with it. And it's, and it's making these decisions about which direction you're going to go in, that's, that's the, the hard bit. I think the, the process itself is so evident in the final piece because you see where all the joins are, you see where one piece of wood has a relationship with another. And it's, what is that relationship? Is it a hard edge? Is it something that bleeds into it more softly? Um, if it's an irregular edge, then um, somehow the, the relationship with the other piece um, becomes more harmonious than something where you see a rigid line between the two. But then other times a rigid line is maybe what you want. So it's not always about harmony. You know, sometimes clashing, a bit of disharmony is, some, is uh, can feel. But I t tend to respond emotionally. So if I feel something looks like something does something for me, it's almost a physical thing. Um, then it, it, it works rather than maybe following a logic. It's, it's, it's something which I wait to see how the colors, how the textures sing.